Good morning and welcome to uh, worship at Covenant Presbyterian Church in Fraser, Pennsylvania. My name is Pastor Jim Moyer, and I'm here with our pastoral colleagues to welcome you to our worship service. Not with us uh, this morning is Jen Langlois, our Director of Family Educational Ministries. Colleagues, would you please introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Alex Becker. I'm the Associate Pastor at Covenant. Good morning. I'm Tom Sabatino, Director of Music. I'm Kinsey. And I'm Jamie Edgar Nielsen, and we are the Co-Youth Directors at Covenant. Let's begin with our call to worship. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. For the Lord is a gracious God whose mercy is everlasting. And whose faithfulness endures to all generations. And now our opening hymn will be 826, Lift High the Cross. And our musicians this week are again members of the Chancel Choir of Covenant Presbyterian Church, accompanied by Bonnie Summerfield. Yeah. 
Good morning, church family. My name is Mike Neeb, although I might be better known to you as Joan and Avery's dad. There they are. My family and I have been members of Covenant for going on five years now, and today it's my privilege to give Tom a well-deserved respite from speaking to you about stewardship. When I told my family that I would be speaking today, their immediate concern was whether I'd be wearing a bow tie. I don't know if there's anything magical about wearing one to speak about stewardship, but I wasn't willing to chance it. As Tom mentioned a couple weeks back, this year's campaign will be different from any other we have had. We'll be using a combination of video presentations, email messages, and U.S. mail to connect with you. And sometime in the last two weeks, you should have received more information about this year's stewardship campaign with an estimated giving card. If you haven't done so already, we ask that you please return that estimate of giving card as soon as possible so the church can plan and budget expenses for next year. Remember, as always, this is only a planning tool for the church. It's not a contract. Our theme this year is Still Blessed, which cannot be a more appropriate sentiment this year. It acknowledges the difficulties that we have faced this year that are amplified by living in the time of the coronavirus pandemic. There is the fear of getting sick, loneliness and isolation from being quarantined. For some, there's been unemployment. There's been the inability to be around some of our loved ones and anxiety over how long it will be until we return to what we would consider normal life. In spite of this, we are still blessed by finding new and old ways to connect with one another. Old fashioned letters, phone, email, video, and from the creation of tight knit bubbles that many of us have built. We are still blessed by time to reflect and recommit ourselves to our families. And at Covenant, we are still blessed by the continued dedication of our pastoral staff to bring us messages of faith, hope, and healing, and by the dedicated and skilled members of our congregation who are working so hard to keep us all connected through the use of technology and gradually bringing us back together in person in the form of small group meetings, music, mission, and worship. To those of you on the front line of these efforts, you have my sincere thanks. Patty and I got engaged about 12 years ago, and during the time of our engagement, we had a number of discussions about what we wanted our life together to look like. Of course, we wished for children, and were blessed with two wonderful, loving kids. We talked about what each other's roles would be in the family and household, and we talked about how we would support what was most important to us. When it came to financial matters, we shared with each other where our contributions went every year. When I saw hers, my reaction was, wait, you give that much to your church? At that time, at no point in my adult life had I been a member of a church, and for a lot of years, I never set foot in one unless it was for a wedding or a funeral. My notion of financial support of a church was that much of it was rooted in guilt-based sense of obligation. And this concept of stewardship, well, that word really wasn't even in my vocabulary. Patty shared her stewardship journey with me, crediting Jim Churchill, whom many of you remember from PPC, for helping her along the way. And together, we later found Covenant. And while I supported her in her commitment to financial contributions to the church, it was a little while before I considered it a contribution we made rather than a contribution she made. Today, we give because we value the teaching and messages we, all four of us, receive through worship services, vacation Bible school, children's church, and other events and programs we participate in that help us to be better people than we would otherwise be. We give because we value the relationships we have forged with other members of the Covenant family and the comfort we feel by that connection. We give because we value the impact Covenant makes through its commitment in, to mission work and our community's children and youth. We give because we value Covenant's inclusive, welcoming spirit and truly where God's love has run of the house. As you take time to pray over your stewardship commitment, Please reflect 
and remind yourselves about the things you value most, why you joined Covenant and why you stayed, and then fill out your estimate of giving card accordingly. Thank you for your time, and thank you for your continued support of Covenant Presbyterian Church with your time, your talents, and your stewardship. As I begin to share our announcements this week, I first just want to say thank you. Thank you for continuing to be the Covenant community. It's been so wonderful to see all the different ways we continue to pull together and do new and different and out-of-the-box things to share God's love with one another and with the community. This Saturday, this past Saturday, we had our Halloween parade, and thank you to all the volunteers that made that happen. Thank you to all of the kids who showed up with costumes and smiles and uh, shared some joy with those who were there. Uh, I also want to say thank you to those who have already signed up to support our Christmas families. You all know that this year is going to be a particularly difficult year to provide Christmas presents for a lot of people in our wider community. And so I'm grateful for the people who are willing to step up and share their Christmas blessings with others. We are still in need of many, many volunteers to make sure that we provide Christmas presents to all of the families that we have committed to provide presents for. We are uh, looking to provide 165 families with presents. Uh, as of the time of this recording, we only have 28 volunteers. So if you've been putting it off or forgetting, please sign up, let us know so that uh, we can be sure that we're providing Christmas presents for all of these families that we would like to share with. I also uh, want to apologize for uh, those of you who have been watching via YouTube. You know that we have had some technical difficulties over the past month or so, and thank you for your patience as we work through those. I do want to share that um, if either the YouTube or the Facebook stream goes down during worship, uh, first of all, the videos will be posted for you to watch later, and second of all, uh, Facebook uh, videos, the Facebook stream is available to watch for anyone, regardless of whether or not you have a Facebook account. And the same goes for YouTube. Anyone can watch the YouTube stream, regardless of whether you have a Google or YouTube account. Uh, so thank you as we continue to work through these technical difficulties as well. At this time, I would like to move us into a time of prayer and offer the prayers of the people and ask us to think through who are the people in your life who are in need of prayer? Who are the people that you would like to share God's presence with? Who are the people that you believe need a little bit of extra love or compassion or healing or wholeness in their lives? As you think of those people, lift them up in your own mind and ask God not only to care for them, but to enable you to care for your neighbors as well. With these people in mind, let's continue our prayers to God together. God, we thank you for your spirit of compassion. We thank you as well for all of the people in our lives who have shown compassion to us. We pray in this season of separation, both physically and often relationally as well, that you would send your spirit to bind us together again. Remind us, God, of our commitments to you and to one another, so that as we lift up the names of people in our community who are in need of your love and care, we remember our promises, not only to love you, but to love our neighbors as well. Show us how to do this, God, in a time when it is especially difficult to figure out how to show compassion to our neighbor. We pray, God, for all of the people who are outside of their comfort zones today, who are working in ways that they had never anticipated they would need to work, who are living their lives with barriers that they never expected to have to overcome. We pray also for those in our country and around the world who are doing their best to lead and to guide, who are doing their best to research and to discover cures and provide healing. 
for those who are striving to protect the vulnerable and bring justice to the oppressed. For all of these people, God, we give you thanks, and we pray for your strength upon them. We ask all of this as disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ, following or trying to follow everything that he's taught us. And so in his name, we offer up to you the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me this morning in the pumpkin patch. We're going to talk about how you and I are like pumpkins. Don't believe me? Well, I brought some friends. You and I as Christians are just a little bit like a pumpkin. God goes out into the pumpkin patch and searches through all the pumpkins until God finds you. That's right, you. Then God brings you inside and cleans you all up till you're nice and shiny. Then God looks deep inside of you and takes out all your yucky stuff. God removes the seeds of doubt, hate, and greed until your insides are just as shiny as your outsides. Then God carves you a new smiling face. God then adds his light inside of you so that you too can shine even in the dark. Have a good week, everyone, and happy Halloween.
Our scripture lesson for today is taken from Matthew chapter 5, very familiar words called the Beatitudes, the Blesseds. And as I read through them in just a minute, most of you will recognize these words. What I ask before I read them is that you'll pray. Pray to the Holy Spirit that we're going to be able to hear something very familiar in a very fresh, new way. Let the Spirit speak to us today, because I believe that these are healing words from Jesus to our deep hurts. Healing words to our deep and broken spirits. Matthew chapter 5. Jesus has gone throughout Galilee, teaching, preaching, and healing people of all their mental, emotional, and physical diseases. And fame has spread throughout the land, through Galilee, through Syria, and great crowds are following Jesus. Chapter 5, when the, Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and then he began to speak, and he taught them. So picture the disciples at the feet of Jesus, and then masses of people all the way down the mountainside. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Beatitudes. As a culture, we're used to the idea of measuring. We use the uh, measuring tape. And we measure uh, children's heights. Our grandchildren, James and Eva, had a Hershey Park day the entire school went to Hershey Park and they were telling me how they measured as they entered. They were measured. James was tall enough to be a Hershey's chocolate bar and Eva is now tall enough to be a Reese's cup. I can only imagine if Brindley had been there, she'd probably be a Hershey's kiss. Who knows? measure. They're measuring for their safety. But this idea of measuring people has spilled over to the culture and usually in a negative way. People are measured why they're not successful. They're measured as to their degree of power. They're measured as to how callous they are. We measure, we judge, we diminish each other with our measurements of each other. It's very common. Listen to everybody's speech. Listen to it in the home as well as the workplace or out if you're out and about uh, zipping in through the acme with your mask on. Listen. People are measuring each other with their eyes, their speech, their spirit. Jesus is trying to reach people that have been measured 
by their world and come up short. They've been excluded. It's not for their safety. It's because they have been deemed by the aggressors, by the callous, by the rich, and by the powerful, by those superior to them, they have been measured losers. They are the hungry ones. They are the desperate ones. They are the lonely ones. They are the people that can make no contribution to my life. They can't help me in any way. They've been separated from the clean and righteous religious people. They're not acceptable. We've heard the term, they're society's lepers. Jesus says, wait a minute. And he speaks to the people people that have been discarded by a society. He speaks to the disciples. Some of them are just regular fishermen. Some of them despised as a tax collector. He speaks to them and says, blessed, wonderful news. He makes an announcement. Wonderful news to you. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom of God. What? This is good news? These aren't poor-spirited people. These are the opposite of the proud people. They have been humbled by circumstance. And Jesus says, you're in. You don't have to do anything. No one's going to see if you measure up whether you're acceptable. You're in. God says through me, Jesus Christ, you're in. The kingdom of God is here for you. This is good news. This is great news. Celebrate, be happy, rejoice. Bravo. Can you imagine people that have been shunned? People that have been walked past? People, if they're beggars, people walk to the other side of the street to get around them. People not accepted by their families. Who are those people in your life today? Imagine Jesus is saying to them, and maybe it's to you and me. You think you lack? You think you don't measure up? The world's telling you you're not worthy. We talked about worth last week. Well, let me tell you, the kingdom of God is completely different Jesus is turning things upside down and says the kingdom of God not only is in heaven, of course, but it's coming here on earth and I'm bringing it and I'm, it's starting now. God's kingdom of beauty and peace, truth and justice for the smallest, the weakest. Justice for all. It's coming now. It's starting. That's why I'm here. I'm here for you. Now that's good news. And he goes through a series of blessings for those who are at the end of their rope. Those who are feeling great voids and spaces in their life. He says, God's here to fill those voids. God's here for you specifically. And you're in the kingdom of God belongs to you. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? And how do you experience that joy when you're hungry, when you're lonely? How do you, how do you hear that and experience joy? You know. You begin to believe and trust those words. God is with you. And God has brought the whole kingdom for you. That's the truth. Blessed. Blessed. Blessed are you when you're at the end of your rope.
kingdom of God is for you. And you say, well, wait, how do I experience that joy? Well, I remember as a child, I've got Hershey Park on the mind for something. And before school was out, Hershey Park trips were a big event for our summer. We got maybe a day to go to the beach, pack the shoe box. Does anybody remember that? Shoe boxes, we were shoe beats. Leave early in the morning, go down, spend the day on the beach, have your shoe box lunch and then come home. Or Hershey Park. And I think Hershey Park was one of my favorites. And so before school was out, I would uh, find out when we were going. As a family, we'd have one day, we'd go to Hershey Park. And then I'd talk to my cousin, Tommy, because I'd always get invited to go with Tommy's family. When are you going? And I'd talk to my cousin, Nancy. Yes, she was a girl, but she was a nice cousin. And I'd go with them to Hershey Park. So there'd be three trips. And I'd mark them on the calendar. And even though they weren't here yet, they were coming. The Hershey Park trips were coming. And I could experience that joy now, knowing that that was a reality. To those that are poor in spirit, if there's a broken place in your spirit, an empty spot, you're at the end of your rope. God is saying the kingdom of God is coming in its fullest for you. God's peace will be there. God's justice will be there. God's truthfulness will be there. God's beauty will be there. Uh, it's interesting that uh, N.T. Wright, in his commentary concludes this section, he said, uh, the life of the realm where God is king is to become the life of this world. Therefore, live in the present that in a way that will make sense in God's promised future. Live in the present in a way that will make sense in God's promised future because you are part of the kingdom of God. Blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those with empty spaces. Blessed. Yours is the kingdom of God. To God be the glory.
And now receive this benediction. In Christ, we have received grace upon grace. Eternal are your mercies, O God. We trust that God's blessings are as countless as the stars in the sky. We go forth giving thanks for the traces of God's grace in our lives. May the blessings of Father, Son, and Spirit be with you now and in the days ahead. God bless you. Have a great day. Okay, makes sense? Did it make sense?